It starts off with me in the beginning. Oh, alright. Always trying to steal my thunder, huh? Yep. It's on Hi, the roll. <laughs> you guys. You guys, we are live here on the Brush by Brandy Facebook page and also over on my YouTube channel. My name is Brandy and I'm the owner and artist behind Brush by Brandy. Um, and I paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening um, at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm on the West Coast in California. Is that clock not set right? That's uh, not right. Yeah, Let's not so, worry about that. Uh, it's I only 5 o'clock. I swear to you guys, somewhere. my clock <laughs> is always wrong in my workspace because just when the time changes, like Sean will change it like two weeks before and then the time changes and it's wrong again. So, uh, oh, the battery was dead on it last time. That's, I, don't, I don't know what time it is. Um, daylight savings. I love that the sun is going down later. I hope you guys are enjoying that too. It means my kids' sports are actually in the daylight now. We're not oddly sitting out in the dark all the time. Sorry, YouTube's <laughs> checking out the pores on your skin right now. Oh yeah, They're you, guys are, getting, you guys are getting all up in on it. Yeah. I know. Like uh, at the five o'clock yeah, shadow like, going that's on. That's always my worst fear, actually. Um, that would be mine. Yeah, well, not my worst, but yeah. So you guys, we are going to start a new piece of furniture tonight. But before I start, I'm going to talk a little bit. And, um, and that's because I want to, you know, take this opportunity to update on some things um, and clear the air on some things. Um, I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to mingle. That is actually not true. <laughs> you at least have to do nine more years with me until the kids are raised. Uh. Yeah. That's, oh, okay. that's the obligation you said. Oh, is that when the ties are cut? Is yeah. when okay. Yeah, nine, All right. nine years. So well, actually eight. You guys saw set your calendars. Yep. <laughs> nine years. <laughs> Just get better with age. Um, no. So you guys know that a lot of stuff has been going on and some stuff has come public, and I chose to speak out on my uh, relationship with Dixie Bell and what happened with them that caused me to uh, sever my relationship with them. It did not um, end on good terms. Um and um, dealing with it behind the scenes has been absolutely a nightmare. So it's a lot of stuff that you guys can't see, but, um, you know, I had to own the decision when I made the choice to speak up and I made the choice to speak up because I have the ability. I do not have a contract term that forces me to stay quiet. They did implement that after I left that restricts anybody from talking with the threat of a $10,000 fine. Um, the reason I speak up is because I want artists to know the risks of signing something like that. It also gave ownership of any creations an artist might make when they're under contract. I also did not have that. I retain ownership of everything I created while I was under contract. Um, people who have had this contract reviewed by an attorney have been told absolutely under no circumstances do you sign something like this. It is not beneficial to the artist whatsoever. And I hope that people will listen to my situation and think about it before signing a contract like that. Because if you take my situation and you implant it into a circumstance that has that contract, the artist loses every time and the brand is allowed to get away with it and you can't say anything about it. So if I don't talk, nobody ever knows. And this keeps going on because there are very few people that are number one willing to speak up and have the ability to speak up. Um, so that is, I have to own the choice that I made to speak up. I started out being quiet. The rumors and the attacks behind the scenes were awful to the point that, um, you know, getting the truth out there was what needed to happen to, uh, when only one side is talking and that's what was going on. Um, they were allowed to control the narrative and I didn't have a version out there. So people want to say for my story that's going on right now, what, uh, there's two sides to every story. That side told their story in my situation. I even posted it in my comment threads because it was so full of holes and people recognized all the inconsistencies. They deleted all the public comments. Um, they took it up, down, or put it up, took it down, put it up, took it down so that it would delete the comments because the public was recognizing the inconsistencies. Um, they weren't buying it. So um, I, that's why there's silence this time, but that story has been told. They already told it. Um, and it is full of holes. Um, the story I've told from the beginning has been the same since day one. It's a factual recount of things that happened. It's not slanderous because the truth can't be slanderous. Um, it is just a timeline. It's a timeline and it's extremely accurate. And there's, there's no questioning whether or not that is a thing that there's, those are things that happen. Um, things that are being said about me out there. I'm going to clear some stuff up. Um, number one, I'm hearing that they're talking about my income. 
and because they felt like I made enough money that I should be that that I should give them the work that I did for free. Um, imagine going to work and your boss saying, "I know you worked eight hours today, but I'm only going to pay you for seven because I feel like you you make too much money." It doesn't matter. They had an obligation. I fulfilled my end of the bargain. You don't get to decide that after the fact. So I, the fact that we're even saying that is completely ridiculous. You know, especially in an industry where, you know, we want to build up, uh, you know, female-owned businesses and make actually being able to make a business out of this. And then when you do make a business out of it, saying, "Oh, but you, it's not worth that much. What you do is not worth that much. Your work isn't worth that." Um, that's extremely degrading to the people who they're trying to sell paint to. Um, I'm going to tell a little bit of my story so that you know where I came from. And I hope that, I hope if anything to be looked at as a success story, because to be called, um, you know, privileged or entitled is ridiculous. Um, Sean and I met when we were kids, we grew up, um, you know, very low income uh, on welfare, lived in government housing. That's where we met as kids. Um, single parent families. My mom had four kids and was a single parent. Um, I didn't have any opportunities allowed to me. There was nothing to have. Um, everything came hard and I had to want it 10 times more, but that hunger has fed me my whole life. Um, I went to college, but I went to college because I paid for it myself. I got one scholarship um, to go to the junior college in my area, and I finished this junior college, and I transferred into a four-year university where I worked at a job that had a tuition assistance program. I would go to school in the morning, then I would work an eight-hour day, and then I would go to school at night. I paid for my tuition up front, and they would reimburse me. Nobody ever so much as bought a book for me for call through college. I say that with pride because it was hard. And for anyone to degrade my accomplishments to this day, it's insulting to me. Um, I put myself through college. I earned that degree. I had a great career uh, with a, a government job before I decided to leave and stop painting and start painting. I'm sorry. Um, comments have been made about the home that I live in. <laughs> which is silly because if you followed mine and Sean's page, you know that we built our home with our bare hands. We hired a contractor who built it to a shell with a minimal construction loan. Um, the contractor built it to a shell. Me and Sean moved out here. We did every single finish ourselves with our bare hands on a bare bones budget. We built this house with our bare hands. Nothing about it came easily to us. Thank you. Um, I am super proud of what we accomplished. Um, we are lucky enough to be a two income household because we've stayed married to raise our kids together. Um, we have a good supportive marriage and that's a huge luxury. And I don't ever wanna discount that without that, it would be much harder. That's why I was able to walk away from the situation that I was in. And I know that is not a luxury that's afforded to everybody. Um, the main attacks coming at me are coming from people that are on the payroll of this company. So these are minds that I can never change. And I'm not going out there to attack people. I told my own story on my own page. I'm not attacking you on your page. If somebody from the public has a genuine question for me about what happened, I will absolutely 100% answer that. If you feel like there's an inconsistency or a whole, uh, most likely it's already out there because I because I've pretty much you know given everything already to this point. So it's probably already out there but I will answer those questions. I have never one time deleted a comment off one of my thread, threads. If you leave a comment, even if it's not in agreement with me, I will answer it to the best of my ability, acknowledging that there's certain things that I can't legally say. Um, speaking of the legal part of it, what I can say is I can give a factual accounting of what happened to me. I'm not allowed to say you know, negative turns that are just purely based on emotion, but you'll notice that I've refrained from that the entire time. So I will support whatever I say with facts. If you feel like there's a hole, um, I'm happy to provide it within reason what I'm allowed to provide. Obviously, I'm not going to send you a copy of my contract because legal aid can't. I'm not going to send you a copy of my 1099 because it's really personal information and it's ridiculous you'd even think that. Um, 
So, but I'm happy to answer those questions, but here's the thing, they're never coming from the public. They're always coming from that side. And if you're on the payroll, then there's nothing I'm gonna be able to do to change those hearts and minds. I respect that. You're making your decision. I'm out here giving a warning. Um, you know, there's a lot of speculation going on with Cassidy's situation. The problem with Cassidy's situation is they signed an agreement, a confidentiality agreement to not use anything in that discussion to enrich themselves and then took that information and used it to enrich themselves to the point that the manufacturer involved in that situation recognized it as her information and brought her into the situation. It was a violation of a contract. Um, I am happy to answer those questions. Like I said, I haven't deleted any of the questions, but what I have done is if you are a retailer on their payroll, still selling this to paint and still defending it, then I am blocking those people because you don't have any reason to be on my page. You're not here um, to follow me. You're here to do the bidding of the paint company. And, and I don't need that. Um, it's, it, there's no point in it. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm not going out to your pages. Um, there's just no reason for it. So I will block those people. So when they say their comments are deleted, it's because it's coming from those people. Um, and then, you know, when I block their, their comments are going to go down too. It's not me deleting the comments. It's taking that person out of my world. Go get your painting tutorials from people inside that world. Um, I will continue to speak up and I want to apologize to people who are on my page for painting. I love to paint, but I also get a lot of requests for business advice. And this is probably the most valuable um, most truthful, most heartfelt business advice I will ever give to anybody is talking about this situation. If you want business advice, take this advice from this story that I'm telling you, because that's what I'm trying to do it for. So I apologize if it's rehashing a situation, but at this point, I feel like I'm owning the decision that I made to speak up about it. And I represent it with every piece of my soul to be honest about it from day one. Um, set the story straight and not let this chatter happen. I'm going to squash it every time. Um, so I just wanted people to know what I'm going through behind the scenes. It's not always what you can see, um, you know, on posts and in front of the camera. There's a lot more uh, that goes on. And that part absolutely should not be happening. Um, attacking the people that it happened to for telling their story is the epitome of victim blaming. Um, it makes no sense to me if you are choosing to still uh, support support their brand and still sell their brand, then you, you need to own it. Uh, all, all the pluses and minuses. You know, I can tell you what my experience was. Was any time I would dissent with something, there was no room for dissent. Uh, any posts would be deleted, comments taken down, and dissent would be shut down. So if I was in a business relationship with something like that, and I was, that would be major red flags and it was red flags to me that there wasn't any room to converse in a healthy way with two businesses that were working together and that is a massive part of having a partnership i respect that retailers become you know almost responsible for the the decisions that the people make but you shouldn't be defending their decisions they should be defending you they are the ones that are supposed to be supporting your small business you're buying their products you shouldn't have to be defending them um, nothing in this whole situation has been handled well, in my opinion. Um, it very much could have been handled, but instead there is just a doubling down on the belligerence. And um, I, I, I just, for the life of me, cannot understand it. So I will continue to tell my story. Thank you to everybody who has given me support. I apologize to the people who don't want to listen to it. Um, and if you need to tune me out for a little bit, I completely understand. I don't want it to be looked at as a negative. I want it to be looked at as this is something we need to talk about. If we don't talk about it, it becomes just a subculture. And that's a horrible thing to have in, in this painting industry. All of us enjoy it because it's something that's supposed to be enjoyable. But we've got to be aware, like, I can't even tell you how many artists and small businesses are are getting into these relationships because they don't know if you, if nobody talks about how are you supposed to know? Um, I wish that I would have known or been more aware, um, you know, there was a lot of gaslighting going on and I listened to it for a long time. And then you start putting the pieces together on your own and it's kind of an aha moment. And I hope that I can just give that little bit of knowledge. So maybe people will recognize it a little bit faster than I did. 
Um, again, I'm going to offer up answering questions, but more than likely the answers are already out there. It's not a, it's not a matter of being vindictive or anything, but I'm tired. I'm tired of the, of the just all out aggression and belittling and cruelty that has nothing to do with really seeking what the truth is. If you've already made up your mind, own it, go do that business, make up your mind and own it. You know, if you're in business because the money's really good, great. Say I'm in it because the money's really good. Um, that, it, you know, my stomach couldn't handle that. So I got, I got no judgment there, but I'm not coming for you. Um, you know, the retailers that want to be protected, you, you are do that protection, but you're do that protection from the brand that you have a relationship with. Look at the stories from all the retailers that are telling what has happened to them. Those are your peers that have been in your shoes and, and, and they're, they want to be heard too. And nobody's listening. Um, so instead of coming at me, look at your situation and really assess it because I'm, I'm telling the truth, you guys. My stories never change. The fact that it's still in doubt when it's been corroborated by how many people at this point? Um, other brand ambassadors who have a different experience, I can tell you 100% without a doubt, they either don't have full information, and there were brand ambassadors that were not parts of the conversations that I had because I was the team lead. So I was in charge of communications. I was having those communications when nobody else was. So I have far more information my losses were already also far more significant. Number one, not everybody had a transfer that came out in that release. Um, those of us that did, the majority left. Um, if you made a different decision, that's fine. Own your decision. But my decision is no less valid. And what I'm saying is no less truthful because of it. I, this has never been about me versus other artists. It's always been about the company that did this to all of us. So I'm not coming for other artists too, and I would appreciate it if they stopped coming for me. Um, everyone's so cool. <laughs> I feel like I just sucked all the air out of the room. I just feel really strongly about this, you guys. I'm, I'm super insulted by, um, you know, it, the questions about my income have said, just, oh, she, it, she expects to make that just for paint videos, just for paint videos. What? Now we're minimizing what the value is of what I'm doing after the fact. I did work. I had an agreement to be paid for that work. You don't get to devalue it. There is a huge, huge effort to devalue my work and remove me from it and act like I didn't put in the full effort that was required when I did that and more. Exactly what was asked of me. What is the industry standard for it? Um, you don't get to question that after the fact just because they want to try to minimize what my value was. If you want to question my income, my income was based on sales. Okay, it wasn't a salary. It was based on sales. Think about the income I brought to that company. Um, they were enriched far more than I ever was. So to question my value based on the fact that I was successful in sales is, is anti every sales program you will ever encounter. Um, I was throttled all the time for being successful at it. I would get the last pick of everything. I would get put on, you know, the worst, you know, the worst opportunity um, at everything. I always had that and I still would succeed and I still would succeed and I still would succeed despite the throttling. But eventually you get tired of being throttled and constantly having to work to, to just prove yourself at the level that you know you can accomplish. But I was throttled all the time. So in spite of that, I still was successful. And I think that goes back to speaking to everything I've ever encountered in my whole life um, with the challenges that I had growing up, with the challenges that I had to put myself through college, the challenges that me and Sean have faced to be homeowners without any, you know, inheritance or, you know, extra enrichment that, that is an absolute blessing sometimes. We've never had any of that. It is our accomplishments 100%. I bought my first home when I was 20 years old using an, a retirement plan from the job that I worked at as my down payment. And I bought my own home while I was still in college. And that decision, but it's those decisions that I've made my entire life because I always had to want it a little bit more. So insulting me for that, I would hope that would be a success story to everyone out there to let you know what's possible, what's real. Um, but to de demean me for having any level of success for that is 
is just beyond insulting and I'm absolutely not going to tolerate it. On top of that, I don't talk about my income publicly. Um, I'm sorry, my former income publicly. So they're only getting that information from internally from that company is feeding that information. Think about how inappropriate that is. That is actually one of the things that I'm not allowed to talk about publicly, nor should they be talking about it. Um, any questions or did everybody already tune out? <laughs> no, no, you've got a lot of people and, a, and everybody's very supportive. Obviously my side of things gets a little, little different when it becomes well, I will um, bring in Sean's side of things. Sean listened to those phone calls. Most, most of those phone calls at the end, Sean sat in on with me. Um, a lot of those decisions we made together. He is very much aware of everything that was going on and was a part of it and heard it from the horse's mouth. So um, he's never done anything but support the same decisions that I've made. And he, he did have to be a part of that. Um, I, I, I don't know. I just can't believe at this point that, that there's even still an ability to even question whether or not what I'm saying is true. You know, you don't have to believe it. That you, you don't have to. You, or I'm sorry, you, you, you can choose to do whatever you want with that information. If you choose to continue in your business, that's fine. But whether or not what I'm saying is true is, is so silly because at this point it's corroborated by so many people. And then there's so many accounts of other stories that it's clearly a pattern. Um, and denying it is, is those are, those are just hearts and minds that I'm never going to change. So that's fine. Go about your business and do your business separate from me. I'm not saying this to, to bring anybody down. I'm saying it because the, the, the fall is harder when you don't see it coming. Um, I, I wish that I would have had the knowledge, you know, that somebody would have talked about this part of the business. It's not talked about. It's very not talked about. How crazy is that? So when everybody's asking me for advice on, you know, making a painting business or even getting into brand deals, like, you know, I worked with enough brands and had enough experience to know what, what, what you should look for. And there are major red flags in a contract like that and in a reputation like that. So people are saying it out loud. Just... Emily says hi. Hi, Emily. There's somebody from Lotus Theory Designs. Oh, I've never, I heard, of, I never heard of her before. I've never heard of her before. Um, Emily, She's going to tell her story yeah, formally. Sorry. You guys are going to make me cry. Um, <laughs> Emily and Bianca went through this um, with me. They know my story better than anybody could. I value those relationships. I valued them before we left. They are strong artists who do what they do well. Nobody deserved what happened to us. Um, I still value those relationships. I'm extremely proud of seeing how all of us have recovered and landed on our feet um, and how we all choose to apply this and in, in how we move forward. And, you know, my decisions might be different. I don't, I've never pressured anybody to make the decisions that I'm making. Um, but I value those relationships um because they know better than anybody else so we all went through it together um and they landed on their feet and they've got you know amazing businesses our talented artists um we were the hardest you know we were the hardest working we knew what was required of us before it was a hard job that we were doing and we and we know now um how to put that to use to be successful again so um bianca is lotus theory designs um, Emily is Weathered Hearts Designs. Um, Cassidy is Undead Hardware. She has some beautiful hardware. She's shipping me some that I'm so excited about. I got the amber colored drop pulls and I have a really pretty like flame mahogany empire chest that I plan to use them on. That comes way later. Um, so I just felt the need to clear the air. It's really hard you guys to see the kind of stuff that's said about me. Um, it's just all out you know, cruel at this point. And it's really hard to see that stuff and be aware of it. Um, there's no need for it. I'm not saying that about anybody else. I've always said the same message and that message is just my story. It's just my story. I'm not talking about you. I'm not saying stuff about other artists and other, you know, um, businesses or anything. But, you know, you, you want me to have an obligation to protect your business, but the brand that you have a relationship with isn't protecting your business. 
Um, I will do anything I can. Retailers that need to recover, I understand, man. It is hard as heck. I understand. Um, if you're making that choice and you need help or support or advice, you know, I've referred people who are looking to make purchases out to those businesses that I know are in that position. Um, there are um, de-stash groups, which are discount groups all over Facebook. One's called uh, Furniture Refinishers De-Stash. Uh, there's another one. Oh, I can't think of the name. Anyway, there are discount groups out there that are full of these products being sold. You know, people who want to support those businesses, it's available there. But also, you know, the businesses that already have made purchases of their the products, those businesses own those products already. Those purchases are already made. It's future purchases that are enriching the brand. So, um, it, it, you know, people are trying to make that decision and make that transition. You know, I 100% support them in every way possible. Um, I respect how hard it is. I took my business to the ground floor to do this too and had to rebuild. Um, so, you know, I have, I have nothing against those people. You know, we've been through a lot together. So, I don't know. I hope that clears the air on some things. Uh, I hope it squashes some of the rumors. Um, the other one I, I'm going to speak on is the, uh, you know, there's two sides to every story. Yeah, there is. They already told their side. I, I told you guys that. I even posted it in my comment thread with, with my arguments to it um, because it's so, it's so ridiculous. But that's why they're not saying anything because they already told the story and people already hated it and it dug the hole even further. So to say there's two sides to every story, well, if that other side digs you even further, then, you know, there's your, there's your red flag right there. So, um, I don't know. A lot of these arguments are just invalid. And so I'm trying to answer them. Um, you know, stay strong. Thank you guys for the support. Honestly, it's getting us through a really tough time. Um, and thank you for not being a part of that underbelly and just, you know, just being aware, please again, bear with me. Cause I, you know, I'm going to continue to keep you guys aware of what's going on on, on my end of things you know, without dwelling with and still showing you like a, a healthy amount of painting and a healthy amount of really pretty furniture, because that's why I'm here too. Since all of this, um, it has forever changed how I do business. It has forever changed me as a person. Um, I'm a little more jaded. I'm a little less trusting. I never wanted to be like that. Those long-term effects are not fair. Uh, I wish it wouldn't have happened, and I hope nobody ever has to go through that either, because I'll carry it with me forever. And, you know, there will always be this little part of me that um, thinks about this. It will always be part of my story, no matter, even in going through into healthy relationships, you know, I'll always remember that little trauma and be on, on guard a little bit more. Um, I wish that wasn't the case. I miss being as, you know, optimistic and... Um, open as I was before. So that's my download. That's my update. Don't read the stuff, everything you see online. It's, um, it's usually people that are on the payroll that are making an income from that company. So they have a financial motivation. Um, Brushed Chaos posted a really good account from a retailer's perspective today. And she said, if you're looking to go into business with somebody, don't go ask the people who are currently in the business with them because they're going to defend their choice, right? It's really hard to admit maybe you made a bad choice. It was really hard for me. I tried I tried to the very last minute to not acknowledge that, you know, this this is where this was going because I told you guys before, it wasn't a, it's a singular incident that I talk about. There's more before that too. Um, I am proud of the communications I put out during the process. I am proud of the amount of efforts that I made. I do not question one bit whether I made every attempt and whether my attempts were entirely professional. Um, the one incident that people like to cite was when I, uh, you know, the very last phone call we had, I uh, got one, a one liner in on a phone call and I said, you're stealing thousands of dollars out of our pockets. And I was disconnected from that call. That's like really the worst thing that people can say that I did during this whole time. Um, and I, it was a true statement and I was already done at that point. So 
I had already made all the efforts beforehand and people who are citing that just don't know about that because they weren't part of the communication part of it. So it's usually a lack of information, I think. I don't know. We'll try to put it out there. You guys want to paint? <laughs> yeah. I probably need to, but my painting is probably going to look like garbage tonight, so I'm going to warn you. But I've got to get this concept. If you prefer, I'll, I'll, I'll paint. Uh, maybe, I might need Sean to paint because I'm a little... <laughs> Um, just talking about it is hard for me, um, but I made that choice, you know, just like if you're making the choice to do this for financial reasons, then just own it. Just own your choice. Um, like I said, it's never been me against small businesses. It's always been that I'm telling a story about a brand. Um, you should never align yourself with a brand so much so that it's indistinguishable where your business starts or so your business stops and theirs begins. You are not one in the same. Establish your own brand. Establish your own business. Do not do their bidding for them because they're not going to do the same for you. Um, there have been a million times I have wanted to quit. This is Wiesel Paint in Carbon, by the way. <laughs> it's a really pretty charcoal gray. <laughs> To you, uh, I'm using my Klingon S50 brushes. Uh, there have been a million times that I wanted to quit, but then I figured that that is the definition of defeat. And that's exactly what they hoped that I would do, is just go away quietly. That's that's the whole effort. Do you guys notice that? The whole effort is just to keep people from knowing about it. It's not to actually change anything. It's just to keep people from knowing about it. That That's crazy to me. Um, I stay because... If I quit, it doesn't acknowledge that there are good people out there that are trying to do things the right way. Um, I uh, I made a positive post about why I'll paint. I'll, I'll go ahead and tell my story with them, you know, really quick. How many stories do you have? I've got a lot of stories, guys. Way more stories than I want to have. Like I don't I don't want to have all these stories, but I do. Um, I have a lot of good stories. That's why you guys watch me, right? Because you like story time, though, right? Um, I think this is a little different than regular story <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, this is a little bit different, but it is very much still story time. Um, uh, Wise All Paint was the first paint to ever share my work on social media. Um, when I left the brand, when I left Dixie Bell, um, they opened their arms to me and said, if you need anything or if you you know would like to work with us, we would love to have you as you know, as one of our affiliates, as a user. Um, and they sat back and I said, I'm not ready yet. I need time. And they gave me all the time in the world, but still supporting me every step of the way. When I was with the competition, Karen, who's one of the owners of Wise Owl, used to reach out to me and just say, you're doing a really great job. That meant the world to me, and it also showed me that there are companies who are not trying to erase their competition. They're trying to exist in this paint world, but they're not trying to be the only one, the only choice. Um, Wise Owl on their website sells Klingon brushes. They sell Greenies cleaner and stripper. They sell salt wash. They don't repackage them as their own. They uplift those businesses because they make a good product. They don't try to copy it. They don't try to, you know, duplicate it and put that business out. They uplift them and they partner with them. And that's how they've been to me. They've made me a partner and never tried to um, insult the work that I've done or the value that I brought. Um, or separate me from work that I've done or claim any ownership of anything as their own. Um, never. I'm painting around the drawer boxes, you guys, because uh, these do have a frame that covers up the um, body of the dresser. And so I want to, I will have to take the drawers out and, and clean that up. But for the time being, I at least don't want to have paint that's gathered in those areas. So I'm trying to just make sure I have a nice, smooth line 
um, and no paint gathered in those areas. This is gonna be my first coat. It won't be a, a smooth or a, a flawless blend. Um, this is actually a more challenging dresser to blend on because it doesn't have a smooth front. All of these drawer boxes uh, come out from the frame and I'm gonna have to make the frame blend as well as the drawer faces. I will at some point have to take these out and blend the body to match the drawer faces. But right now I just wanna get a base coat on so I have some coverage. It's going to take me a couple coats to do what I wanna do. Um, so I just wanna cover up this gray primer. This is Wiesel primer in light gray, by the way. So I don't know, I'm gonna leave the, the open again. This is black cherry. And say, if you ever have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Most of the questions or um, um, Descent is not even coming from the public and that should concern everybody because it's the public that buys the paint. These are your customers. These are people that have questions and should not be ignored and deleted and sidelined in a, you know, in favor of a self love campaign that isn't based in reality. So, um, but I will acknowledge that usually the dissent is coming from people on their payroll and that's, there's no reason. I don't need to have those conversations. All right, you guys feel informed? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is why it's all paint in black cherry, which is a deep purple. Now, I always feel like the first coat of black cherry when I put it on is kind of scary for me. It's usually not the color that I intend for, to, to use. It's a really pretty purple with some, you know, nice vibrant like red undertones to it. So very, you know, warm, rich purple, but you don't see that till, till the second coat. So black cherry needs two coats to really get that true color that you usually see in photos. The first coat I'm usually like, <gasps> it's a little bright for me, not what I intended. This piece is actually going to be a bathroom vanity. We are going to add some transfers to it. Um, we're going to do a resin top on this one because it's going in a bathroom. That'll make it waterproof so she can um, drill it out for sinks. I've actually done another one for her too already that she drilled out for sinks. And this one is going in a larger bathroom. This other one was a smaller single sink. This one will have two sinks. And that's why she chose the one that has the doors on the front. So these drawers here can be taken out and, and um, plumbing can be um, accommodated in this space here. So I'm putting uh, my, I'm laying my colors on right now. I'm just trying to get my, my gray all covered. Like I said, I will remove these drawers and get all around this frame. But this gives me an idea when I'm doing the frame, it'll at least tell me where my color layout is so that when I take each drawer out, I know, you know, I know that the transition between the gray and the purple lands right here. And I can copy that with the drawers out too. Because I needed that, to Donna. <laughs> so Donna says black cherry food. That's my color. Yep, yep. yep. So we're going to do, um, she's picked some, we're going to do some gold accents, some Harlequin. Like she has a really, really fun taste. And um, I'll have to share with you guys the picture of the first bathroom vanity that I did for her because it was a piece that I did that had a bumblebee theme. It was a yellow Bombay chest with a bumblebee theme. And um, she used like a hexagon tile in the bathroom. And my piece had hexagon shapes on it, like a, like a beehive. So it just came, the bathroom came out really cute, but it was all inspired by that vanity with the bee theme. And then you're putting a, just to recap, you're going to put a resin top on this. Uh, yeah, we are going to pour a resin on this. Wait, now, what? Yeah, we are. Oh. Sean's usually involved. That's a two man job, uh, especially bit pieces that are big like this. It's just a, it's a messy process and you have to move quickly. Um, so usually I have Sean come out and help me. Um, just move things if I need to move them quickly, uh, videotape, because I can't, you know, I can't, you have to pay sole attention to what you're doing, you know, versus being able to video and pour and, um, and Sean gets super nervous. Yeah, he gets super nervous because like resin is one of those permanent things. It's like pouring concrete where if you screw it up, like when it dries, uh, my nose is, my nose is leaking. 
All right, so you guys ready for something that you're probably gonna think is a little crazy? Wait, what? What now? Um, we're gonna put some brown on here. Let me explain why. Um, this is gonna have some gold in it. And this is gonna look a little crazy, but I'm gonna use metallic. And these are two gold options that I have. This is a glaze from Redesign with Prima called Tiger's Eye. This is um, Wiseau uh, Heavy Metals uh, Gilding Paint, which is just a really rich pigmented metallic. I think I'm gonna go towards this one, which is a little bit more brown version of a gold. It's a little bit more of an antique gold, um, but I'm gonna put some gold in here. Now, now really quick, sorry to uh, pull you back, but as far as uh, blending, are you, were you using the same brush? Uh, no, I have a brush for each color. So, so far right now I have two brushes. I'm about to get my third one out because I'm going to put my third color in here. So this is for my carbon and this is for the black cherry, one brush for each color. And then which were you blending into the black with? Um, I have black cherry is the purple, carbon yep. is a charcoal gray. I feel like I'm a little heavy on heavier on the carbon than I want to be. Um, I need to blend that out a little bit better. Again, this is just my rough draft. I'm going to kind of work this line a little bit more. So I just added a little bit of water to kind of freshen up my paint. I do want the, the carbon to just be kind of the very edges of the drawer and then in these little seams right here in between the center. That's where I kind of want it. Okay, so kind of there. Do you have an affiliate link or discount codes or any of that stuff? I do. So I put up my affiliate link for Wise Owl is on this post uh, for YouTube. It'll be in the description for the video. Um, and, and then on my website, I have all of my affiliate links too. <laughs> I'm laughing behind the scenes because he was carrying and he brought out a box of Kleenex and then he noticed that I already did and I got the look. <laughs> Come here, Sass. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come sit with me. I'm gonna So what Sean's laughing about is Sean brought me a box of Kleenex and my son brought me a box of Kleenex. Oh look at the coloring. I'm well taken care of you guys. Super lucky. That's only because he wants something from you. <laughs> yeah, he, <does. laughs> he wants my help writing an essay after I get off camera tonight. <laughs> Way to go. Yeah, I mean, he could ask for worse things, right? All right, so this portion is going to be a, a, a little highlight of gold in the center. It's going to look a little crazy. And I'm going to start with brown. Um, this is Wiseau paint. This is earth. Chocolate would work, but I couldn't find my chocolate. I might dig for it, and my second coat will probably be chocolate. Because earth is a little a gray, and chocolate's a little warmer. Um, so the reason I'm using brown, um, yellow would work too, but the reason I'm using a brown is because, um, metallic paints don't have a whole lot of pigments in them. And this is going to help me get coverage. So it's just going to be my color underneath the gold paint. I could use a yellow too, but I want my gold to be, I think a little more of an antique -y gold. So I think the brown's a better fit for that. Oh, if Good. you need help with an essay, Angie can help you. She's a retired teacher. Oh, are you really? Have at it. Oh my gosh. Uh, so his essay is kind of on a cool topic though. Actually, this topic will absolutely resonate with him. Um, it's about- It's weird because I'm right here. It's an, you have, he has to make an argument about whether participation trophies are beneficial or not. He has to explore the good and the bad sides of participation trophies. Well, my kids are really, you know, into sports. And so they, they've definitely seen both sides of it. You want your, you know, you want your hard work acknowledged with accomplishments, but also, you know, uh, even if you're not the most accomplished, you still have to put in the work. So, um, yeah, I think, I think it'll be a really interesting essay to write. So this looks absolutely crazy. I'll be the first to say it. And then let me show you what I will do from here. Okay, and this will kind of clean up that process. This screwdriver right here. Really? Right, this will work. Will that work? Screwdriver. Okay, then I will take my drawers out. Okay, while my paint is still wet, so it's not dry. And then I can go and I see, oh, okay, I've got I've got my brown right here. Let me fill up my paintbrush. 
Okay, and I'll fill that in with some brown. And then up top, I've got my black cherry and I don't want this paint to dry with a line right there. So I clean that up. Okay, um, these are my favorite type of dressers to do a blend on because they've got all these lips and it means doing the same job multiple times. And then I've got my carbon over here and my carbon over here. Clean that up. I'm not gonna get full coverage. This is just my base coat. Oh, Brittany's got all kinds of questions going on oh, about yeah. blending. Do you tend to blend in a round or a circular um, shape? I do, because if you if you think, well, I mean, the other way would be like a horizontal. You could do like an ombre pattern. I usually do that highlight in the center because I think about like when light shines on something, you usually have the point of light. So think about like if you have your ring light out with your tripod and you shine your ring light on somewhere, it's going to make like a little highlight in the center of something. Wherever. Here, hold on, this one has a disco light. Hold on, let me see what it looks <laughs> it like. It actually does have it. <laughs> so, so I try to think about like if I was shining a light on it, it would make a sort of highlight. And I, I usually will pick an area that I want to highlight. Like if it's a piece that's got a curve to it, the light's going to hit on the, on the front of that curve first and it's going to get darker as you go back. So I'll have a highlight on the front and it'll get darker as we go back. This one doesn't have um, curves on it, but it's still the same concept. If I were to put a light on this, it would have a focal point. And so that's kind of the idea that I'm working around is just that, you know, how, how it would look like a, like a highlight. I don't want it to look like it's just a weird orb. Oh, Brittany, I don't blame you. She said she's uh, got a big project coming up, so. Yeah, and, and you know, um, another another tip is I, I all the time will put a camera on my work and I'll look at it on camera. Oh, you don't want to see this. <laughs> because sometimes the camera will pick up spots like light or dark spots that I can't see with my naked eye. Um, and so using a camera like a mirror can be super helpful. Sometimes when I'm done with a blend, I'll take a picture of it and see if I like the placement because even stepping back, like sometimes I don't see everything. Sorry, I got paint underneath and I'm trying to not spill. Oh. You got it? Okay, and you can see I've got all these spots here that my paint has missed and you just see the primer. And so I'm just putting the same color there that I've got on the front of the piece around the frame. And then I'm going to do just inside the frame too, just so it has a nice clean line in there. It looks like a, like it's a finished piece. So I make a nice clean line inside that drawer and you can get up underneath too. A lot of times I'll do that. Um, I'll put the piece up on its back and I get up underneath too. Uh, these sides over here are going to be carbon on the inside. Um, if I feel like my paint is starting to set up and I'm not ready yet, I add a little bit of water and brush it out. So this piece is going to be extra work because I'm going to have to do these blends like two and three times around the drawer fronts and then come inside to the body. I've got a little, what's that screw from? I think there's a screw coming through from up underneath. What? Oh yeah, it's holding this skirting on. Interesting. I don't think it affects anything. It's just kind of a weird screw. Well, because yeah, the, it's always covered by the drawer. Yeah. All right. Now inside this body i just did the gray and i got the brown i'm just going to brush a little bit of the purple in there and that'll make it look like it's a blend in the right spot i can always change where the spots are on my next coat but i'm going to give that some purple because that it has a purple transition in between the two okay that's all the body's going to look like inside until i do my second coat and of course same with this drawer so if you're looking for a piece to do a smooth blend on, look for drawers that don't have this out, this overlap on the outside. It will be more frustrating, 100%. Um, this is probably gonna frustrate me too. And then I don't know yet what colors we're gonna do on the top, but we're gonna make it look like a marbled resin. You know, like it's a stone top maybe in a bathroom. 
Ashton uh, just noticed your clock is off. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you out here and being so observant? <laughs> so you guys, my son Ashton is out here. I'm going to have a brag on Ashton moment. He just got invited to play up in what's called the Futures League for water polo. And what that is, is it's, it's athletes who are who are the futures, right? And uh, you have to be invited to play up with them. And so he just got invited to his first tournament to be part of the futures team. So that's what we're doing. Spring break starts next week. A lot of people are going on vacation. What? Yeah, not us. I mean, other people. Oh, I mean, gosh. smart people. Yeah. People that don't let the calendar fly by. Yeah, I mean, we just went to Australia a few months ago. And, and so we kind of knew that was like our big vacation for the year. That was kind of the deal. And then Sean has this thing called a job. Yeah. So. And next month we have some, some, some sports travel coming up. Next month. Oh, and the month after. Oh, and the month after that. And the month after. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So. Now I get to do what I just did here times three. Uh, the sides will be much easier, but this is going to be kind of the process. So now um, what I would also do is I'm going to check out these drawers. So you can see here where this where the drawer bottom is. Now I need to touch up this. Do not choose these types of pieces to do a, a blend over unless you want to blend 872 times. My best advice. No, uh, just eat 71. Thank goodness this is just a first coat. My second coat will probably have a lot more uh, like cuss words involved, maybe. And then I would wait for the paint to dry because I don't want to get any on these four sides. It's not exactly on the glide. But you can see basically how it fits in. That needs a little more purple. So my main goal on this coat is to not get um, brush strokes, not let my paint puddle up in areas and just get consistent color placement. Brittany, it's going to have a resin top. Yes, it, this will be a bathroom vanity. So we're going to pour resin. Oh, I know. I was going to tell you guys. Uh, it has a wood top on it now because I stripped the top on this thinking I was just going to do uh, my own finish on it. And I was going to spray it in one hour enamel. And then my customer contacted me and she was like, what do you have that has doors in the center that could accommodate plumbing? And I sent pictures of this and she liked it, but I had already stripped the top. So um, that was extra work, shouldn't have done it, will end up being a waste of my uh, time because now I'm going to have to reprime it to seal that wood. Um, I'll put a primer on there and we will pour uh, resin over it. So ignore that it's wood up there right now, didn't need to happen. Sorry, Brittany, your comment flew by, uh, but I'm, I only saw that not the top top. So what are you going to coat this in? What are you going to coat? Um, I will coat. seal this um, in, in Weisel, um matte varnish. I'm guessing that's where she was going with it. Um, it's a nice durable coating. Now this customer, because I've done bathroom vanities for her before, knows don't, you know, standing water, I don't care what top coat you're using. If you leave standing water on top of a water-based clear coat, it, it's going to have an impact. So standing water, extreme heat. So, uh, I mean, that'll be the same for even the top. Like you don't want to leave a hot curling iron or something up on the top. Um, let me show you guys something I just did. So this side right here. When I have the drawer in, I got paint on the side. I'll just sand this off. It's raw wood. I'll just sand that. Uh, I didn't get it on the other side. And it came from when I was painting the body. And then Paula wants to know why she can't send stars. Oh! <laughs> you want to hear why? Because I can't get my stars back. Because Facebook took them away because I violated, like, a, uh, I used a song or something that wasn't allowed in, in, a, in a country. where a, a country I didn't even post the video in. What? Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't remember the exact situation. I'd have to go read the report again. But so they turned off my stars because I violated some agreement in, a, in another country. It's not even something in the United States. I, I, I so but I was like, whatever. I mean, I make like three dollars a month in stars. I, I'll, I'll just have the kids go panhandle or something for for a few hours at the end of the driveway. We'll be OK. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, what? And then I don't even have the option to like appeal it or anything. So, you know, that's how it goes. Facebook, Facebook's not gonna make me rich. They don't pay very well anyways. It's just like, you know, kind of enough to have dinner at the end of the month. Um, you know, what's funny is I actually did the, um, 
This drawer I'm going to redo because I, ha I have a fingerprint on here and I just am not happy with this blend. This is the bottom drawer and I'm going to do it while the drawer is out. What? That's crazy. This will give, it will make me much happier with where the blends are. And this, once you get your basic color layout down, you can do this with it out of the body too. <laughs> Sheila, you're an international violator. Go yeah, make it go home. Yeah, I did. I, I committed some sort of international crime. I, I honestly have to read it because it's been like a year now. I can't even really remember what it is I did. I think it had something to do with music rights in, in other countries. Oh, you know what I think it was? I think it happened when I was in another country. What? I like posted like an American and didn't think about being in another country. I think it happened when I was in another country. I can't take you anywhere. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Anyway, it was not. It go was, big and can't go home. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. So I did um, the career fair at my middle son's school this week, which was so funny, actually, because uh, I'll tell this story, too. I was standing in the office. I was setting myself in to be there for the career fair. You know, come talk to the kids about social media because they all think they're going to be Mr. Beast. Um, and one of the yard duties looks at me and she goes, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me right now? And I was like, what's going on? What did I do? Holy cow. I had no idea what she was talking about. And she was like, are you the painter girl? And I was like, oh, and she's like. I got your back, girl, 100%. Like, you stand strong. You guys are doing the right thing. I've never met this woman before in my life, and I'm in the office at my son's school. The secretary is looking at me like, what? She's seen me 100 times, and she's like, what is this lady talking about? And it was so funny. She was so sweet. Um, so I, I, um, I thought that was so sweet. Um, Shout out to whoever you were. Yeah. Um, so... I, um, I did the career fair at my son's school and I talked to the kids about social media. That was really, I don't know, it was really educational. They had some really good questions, but I think gave them kind of a realistic look at, you know, earning an income on social media. Um, you don't get rich fast off social media. Like, you know, props to the ones who have done it big because uh, it's not easy. They don't take off quickly. That's been my experience. Anyways. You mean it's not all cat videos? Cat videos probably make more. It actually frustrates me because some of my most popular videos have been a cat video, a video where I painted my fingernails. Like nobody, it's not for painting. It's not painting. You guys want to see me make fingernail videos. And then I'm like, why do I even bother? So this is really pretty, you guys. This is closer to what my blend will be. And I think I'll probably end up taking each drawer out of the body. And this is how we'll get them a little more perfected. Um, I'm probably going to do two coats just with raw paint to get my full coverage, and then I'll introduce the gold, which means it'll take me three coats, but my last one will be a really thin coat just to introduce the sparkle over the top. If I were to put it in at this point, it's just going to get um, obscured by the paint. Um, if I'm going to use that glaze, it's in a clear body, and so it, it doesn't have any coverage, which means I have to get my full coverage from this brown paint. And then I'll put the gold <laughs> Cat in your sink? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you remember that? I was like, I just came in the bathroom to use this thing and I was like, excuse me. Always... And yeah, he, he loves it in the sink and he was not going to move. Didn't even occur to him that he should. All right, you guys, I've been on for a super long time. I have a new video coming up on my YouTube channel this week. So if you guys aren't already, go subscribe there. Um, thank you again to everybody for your support. Honestly, it's getting us through a hard time. I've been dealing with this for two years. Um, it's, it's new for Cassidy and I'm, she's an extremely strong person and I just, you know, I'm super proud of her. And so you guys, thank you for supporting me and Cassidy through everything. Um, I, um, I'm not encouraging anybody to attack anyone at all, um, at all. Um, I want to make that clear. I, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. I'm not out attacking. I'm giving, you know accounts of my story and I'll answer questions, but I'm not out going out and seeking a fight. So, but that's kind of coming my way, but I'm not encouraging you guys to do that either. Um, all right, guys. So I'm going to pop off. What do we have? Spring break. Have a great spring break, everyone. The weather is beautiful. Uh, enjoy vacations and stuff. If you've got uh, It's going to start raining tomorrow. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Happy Easter! I don't have to do my jog as long. I'll see you guys one more time before Easter, but um, yeah, Easter's coming up, so go. Uh, the Easter Bunny needs to do his shopping. Yep. That's what I'm saying. Yep. <laughs> I just.
just kind of look. It's like he's figured it out. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you for listening, and I will catch you guys next week.